um, people express an interest in hydroponic setup. Just want to go over it real quick. Um, what you see here is a Rubbermaid um, tough container. Uh, what I've done is I've actually taken a drill, drilled out this piece. Um, not my prettiest work ever, but I've attached a cooler drain. This allows me to drain it every week or so. Here is the top of it. What I've done here is I've cut six holes and as you can see there are little ridges and these enable me to put these pots which I ordered from a hydroponic store into each one of these and it gives it a nice tight fit. Alright, so now that you get that concept, the next thing is going to be this guy. And this is a uh, Frankenstein amalgamation I made. Um, this is a water pump, um, not to be confused with an air pump like you use in uh, a aquarium or something like that. This guy actually lives inside of here, like so. Um, I've cut a hole for the, the power to go out of, because um, obviously you don't want underwater power. It goes out like that. It stays in here. And this piece right here that I've attached to the pump, uh, let me bring it out so you can see it better. This piece right here actually has a uh, little quarter inch tubing. Each one of these tubes runs into one of the baskets. So we put this down. I've also on the side made a little annotation as to where I should fill it. Um, once it's full, this is partially translucent so I can see where the water is filling to, but six gallons gives me an idea of how much nutrient it needs. Next up, these are clay rocks. These clay rocks actually go into the pots, um, like so, and you'll see the purpose of those in a bit. The last little stage of the hydroponic setup is this guy, which looks really cool, I think. This is the air filter. Um, this lives outside <coughs> of the hydroponic setup. Um, the only thing that lives inside it is this little guy right here, which I've got a hole for. Um, I'll have to take this off, which is fine because I have a larger one I'm using anyway. So I snake that through there. It lives in the bottom of this, and <coughs> excuse me, it oxygenates the water. So it provides the water and nutrient solution that this is pumping into the pots. Um, with more oxygen, which is something the plants need. Now, next up, I'll go ahead and assemble it and walk you through the nutrition mix. Now we are in my uh, room that I have. Uh, this is a bathroom, and I have partially converted it to a hydroponics crew area. You can see mylar there. I've got a door um, that covers this whole thing, but I've temporarily removed that so you can get a better view. So. The next step is figuring out what kind of nutrients and other things plants need. So you see here I print up some little tiny tomatoes. These were grown in rock wool cubes and you see by the seed development right there that they're about ready to go into the hydroponics setup. You don't want to try to grow seeds straight from hydroponics. I tried that. It didn't work very well. So I'll pick the six healthiest of those and put them in this guy. So, next thing is the nutrient solution. So there are two important things for nutrients. Uh, you see I've got three different uh, kinds of nutrients right here. Um, each one of these has actually got a different NPK level. So that's those three numbers at the tops. So that stands for nitrogen, uh, potassium, and potash. So if you look right here, it actually tells you that different plants, sorry, trying to get a better view for you. Uh, let's see. Well, and move you forward a little bit. There we go. So, I guess we'll just have to kind of take my word for it. There we go. Um, so, you'll see here that um, each one of these has different uh, applications and as the plants go from just vegetative to flowering 
you'll use different varieties of the three of these. Because these plants are, are still almost seedlings, but not quite. Um, these are almost actually ready for sale at a store. Um, I'm going to use the uh, second category, which is just for mild vegetative. Um, that's one teaspoon per gallon. This is six gallons, and I'm going to be filling it with the shower head that has got a custom filter in it um, that strips away a lot of the harmful stuff that comes from city water. Also of note is this. This is a T5 light. Um, it is fluorescent. It is um, four tubes, and although it's hard to see because it gives off so much light, this one is, in my opinion, T5s are the best for hydroponic growing. And you see you get a nice even light. And over there you can notice I've got a little fan for air circulation. And right there I've got a temperature monitor. So, the next thing we do, and I will skip this part. Oh, and also, I have a manual timer there that ensures that this uh, light goes for about 12 hours a day. Um, 12 to 14 is your optimum. Anything less than that, they won't like it. And anything more is actually detrimental as well. So let me fill this up with water and nutrients, and then I'll show you the work in progress. I've added my three different nutrient solutions. You can see that water is uh, kind of an off-putting color. Um, this device right here is a PPM meter. It measures parts per million. It may be difficult for me to show you the reading, but let's see if I can do it. Okay, so we're reading at about a 745. It's a little bit on the high side of parts per million. You don't want to get too high and you don't want to get too low. That means you have no nutrients. But that should be okay. Now this is a pH meter. It measures the pH of the water. Um, what we're looking for is about a 6 pH. So let's see what we've got here. Excellent. So we got a 5.73, which means we don't need to use the other two solutions I have which are pH up and pH down chemicals. Um, they do exactly what you would think they would. They turn the pH up or they turn the pH down. The final step, and you see here that I've run into each one of these a little cable. So there's one. Push that guy down. And as you can see, another little cable right there. These are going to be the guys that are going to pump nutrients from the solution and the oxygenated mix into um, our solute. So, what I do is I take these rock, this, uh, these are clay uh, rocks. They're pH neutral, not have any chemicals or anything else like that. So they're great to use in this. But I will fill these partially into there and then transplant these little plants. So once everything's done and it's pumping, I will show you the final video. Now I've placed all the plants. I've got them in their... Okay, so now I've placed all the plants. I've got them in their um, clay medium. If you can hear that sound, that is the sound of the water circulation. Which, if I lift up this a little bit, you can see that each one of these guys is draining nicely. Now, two quick questions, or rather, two quick things. Um, some people may wonder, why is the, are the clay pellets necessary? Well, the roots, even though this is a hydroponic setup, still need something to hold on to as they grow. Um, it helps stabilize the plants, it's also pH neutral, and it improves the drainage, so the water just doesn't build up, um, which can lead to all kinds of diseases. Um, next, I'm going to take this. I've attached it by means of a pulley system. So, just lower it down, each one, and lower a little bit more. You actually want these guys to be a couple inches over the light. There we go. Let's take a look. Yep, it's looking good. I'm going to line it a little bit more. And move that cord out of the way. And voila, we are pretty much done. Um, one quick note that I forgot to mention, 
when you were mixing the uh, the three solutions I previously discussed before, these nutrient solutions, you want to mix one at a time and make sure it's thoroughly mixed before you add another one. Um, if you add them all at the same time, it creates something called nutrient lockout, and you can, will not be able to get all the nutrients you need. So, that's it for hydroponics. Let's hope these little plant babies go well. Have a great day.